Hello everyone, my name is Ashish and you're watching another Web YouTube channel. And in this video, we are going to learn about the Google Maps API. So without wasting any time, let's get started. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell icon so that you don't miss any of our videos. Let me first give you a brief overview of the video. We will learn how to use the maps API, how to add various type of markers, how to add a pop-up box, how to set the zoom level, etc. As usual, I'm using the VS Code text editor with the live server extension. So now let's start. First, let's open a new tab and in the search box, we will write Google Maps API. Here we'll click on the Google Maps platform Google developers link. And we will be able to see this page. Here we will click the Maps JavaScript API. You will come on this page and here you can see the message that before you start using the Maps JavaScript API, you need a project with billing account and the Maps JavaScript API enabled. So what is a billing account? It is nothing but a regular Google account with your billing process setup. That is basically your payment methods set up. Now how to enable the Maps JavaScript API? Let's see that. For that, we'll click on this go to console button and then you'll reach on this page. So here they say to enable APIs or to set up billing will guide you through a few tasks. So enter the project name. Here I'll say my maps project. And I'll click on create. After that, you'll come onto this billing accounts page where you have to set your billing account or if you don't have it, you can create one. After that, you will be directed to this page and here you have to select the products and we'll click on maps. Now, remember that everything we are doing here is absolutely free of cost. There's no charges for it. You just need to add the billing, but you will not be charged anything. So I selected the maps option and I'll click on next. And then you can see we have got a message saying enable Google Maps platform. So we'll click on enable. And then you can see we have got our API key. You can either copy this API key and keep it somewhere or otherwise you can just click on done. And then if you want to see the API key, you have to click on this hamburger menu. Now here you have to go to APIs and services and then you have to go to credentials. And you can see that our API key is here. So whenever you need it, you can copy it from here. Now let's come back to our API documentation. So if you scroll down, you can see that they have given a simple example how to implement the Google Maps API. We'll copy and paste the code from there. So we'll click on the HTML tab and from here we will copy this complete code and we'll paste it here. Now let's try to understand this code. The first script we have is the polyfill JS. So the polyfill JS is a library used to add support and functionality for older browsers. Here, this is a tutorial and not an actual project. So we don't need this script right now. So I'm going to delete it. Next, we have the script tag, which contains the source for the Google Maps API. And here we have to provide our API key at this location. So where can we find our API key? We can find that in the credentials. So let's go to the credentials tab in the Google console. And here you can see this is our API key. So we'll copy this and we'll paste it here. This is because we have put the script in the head section. So this will, by adding the defer keyword, it will not block the code. And only when the HTML is passed completely, this script will run. Next, you can see we have a link tag to our style.css file. So we have to amend the path and that is it. Next, we have another script tag, which is to our local JavaScript file. And the name of the local JavaScript file is script.js. So we'll change this to script.js. And we'll also move this script tag down after the body element because we want our script tag to load at the end. And that's it. Now inside the body element, we have a div having the ID of map. This is the div where our map will be generated. So now let's click on the go live button so that we can see all the changes in the browser. Of course, you can't see anything here right now because we haven't added anything to our script.js file or to our CSS file. So for that, 
now let's continue with the Google Maps documentation. Here we have added the HTML section. Now let's come out to the CSS tab and let's copy this code and we'll paste the and we'll paste this in style.css file. Now let's click on the JavaScript tab and we will copy this and we'll paste this in our script.js file. Now if we see this on our browser, you can see that the map is loaded. Now let's add some styling. You can see in the style.css that since we have set the height to 100%, that's why it is covering the complete height. I'll reduce this to 80%. You can see that this piece of code is marked optional. So we'll remove this for now because I want to add my own styling. Now I'll add a width here of 80%. And above this map div, we'll also add a body tag. And here we'll give it a width of 100 viewport width. And we'll give it a height of 100 viewport height. And we'll also add a margin of auto to the div having an ID of map. So here I'll say auto so that our map is in the center. We can increase the width to 90%. Obviously that is immaterial. And here I'll also add a h1 tag. Just to show what I'm doing. So we'll say Google map. API. We can add a HR tag also and that's it. So now let's see what we are doing in the script.js file. Here we have created a variable map and we have called a function init map. Now what is this init map function? Let me show you. Here when we were calling the Google Maps API, you can see that we are using a callback named init map. So this is the init map function which we are calling. So here inside this function, we have this map variable and we have set its value equal to the new map object and inside the parameters we have to pass three important things. Firstly the DOM element where the map is going to be rendered. So you can see that we have targeted the div having the ID of map and then we have to pass two more parameters that is the center and the zoom level. So this map here refers to the div having the ID of map where the map is being rendered. So if you want to change this to some other ID, say suppose map one, we have to change this to map one here as well. And the same in the CSS file. And you can see that we will get the same result. Now, if you come out of center, let's set the center to something else. So for that, if you want to set the center to your current location, you can either use the geolocation API, which we saw in the last video, or what you can do is search from some other coordinate so let's say if we search for the coordinates of Delhi, if we say coordinates of Delhi and let's see what we get. So we have 28.70 and 77.10. So let's provide this here and the latitude will provide 28.70 and in the longitude, let's provide 77. Point one zero, And you can see here the map is now centered at Delhi. Next is the zoom level. That is you can set it to 8 or you can set it to probably say 10. Or you can zoom out by saying 6. So this is how you can set the zoom level. If you want a guide on the zoom level, you can scroll down in the documentation and here you will find that here the zoom level 1 is world, the 5 is landmass or continent, 10 is the city, 15 is the streets and 20 is the buildings. So these were the compulsory parameters which we need to provide to display a simple map. Now let's see how we can add some markers and do some other cool stuff with our map. Now to create a new marker, we will go into our init map function and inside this we'll say new Google dot maps dot marker and inside this we will we have to specify some properties that is firstly we'll specify the position of the marker so for that we'll say position and we want to specify the marker at this particular location so we'll copy this and we'll paste it here next we have to specify the map on which we want to specify the marker here we only have one map that is defined by the map variable. So we'll say 
map and that is map and you can see that we have created this simple marker now let's see what are what other options we can add to this marker we can create a label on this marker so i'll say label and if i specify I say a so you can see that this label is added here now we can also add a title new delhi now if you hover over this marker we can see new delhi next what we can do is we can set a draggable property so we'll say draggable to true if we set the draggable property to true we will be able to drag this marker and place it anywhere of course we don't want it right now so i'll set it to false next we can also add an animation to the marker so for that we'll say animation and we can say google dot maps dot animation dot drop and you can see that how we are getting this drop animation we can also add a bounce animation to it so if i say bounce you can see how we are getting this bounce animation let's set it back to drop one thing which i forgot to show you that apart from the center and zoom you can also specify a map type id which is an optional property so i can say map type id and here we can say suppose satellite so in that case we will get a satellite map of the area similarly we can also set it to terrain and then we'll get a terrain map so you can use these options as well next what we can do is put a custom marker in place of this default marker provided by google so for that we will use the icon property so i'll say icon and let me show you in my file structure i have this map.png i have this image already saved in my file so you can have an image which is locally saved on your machine or somewhere on the cloud now i'll use the address path of this image so i'll say icon and since this image in the same folder of my project file so i'll say map.png and you can see we have got the new marker now let's see how we can create an info window over these markers for that we will use the info window class so let's make a new variable i'll say info window and we'll set its value equal to new google dot maps dot info window so this info window class allows us to create information windows over the markers and inside this we have to pass the parameter as content string so what content you want to place so i'll say content and here i'll say this is an info window also let's store this marker into a new variable so i'll say const marker equal to this now let's access this info window variable so i'll say info window dot open and inside this we'll pass two things first the map on which you want to place the info window and second the marker on which the info window will be placed and you can see this is how we can place the info window over our marker so these are the basic things which you can do with the google maps this is how you can integrate the map into your website and place some custom markers and information window now if you want to learn more about these things and if you want to experiment more you can go back to the maps documentation and here if you scroll down you have a link to reference implementation click here and here you will be directed to this page on this page click on samples and here you can see you have a lot of other tutorials on what you can do with the google maps api 
So you can add markers, remove markers, you can make custom pop-ups, you can do a lot many other things as per your requirements. That's all for this video. Please hit the like button if you learned something. If you are new here, consider subscribing. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.